So thanks to MSI for bringing us here this year. We would not be here without them. You can check out all their products that they're launching at this show in the description of the video down below. Also, thank you to lynda.com. All right, guys, welcome to the ASUS booth where we will be checking out the ASUS GTX 980 Ti Strix and the RGB Claymore keyboard. So what's special about the Strix? Well, it's featuring new DirectCU Cooling 3 instead of DirectCU Cooling 2, which has three fans instead of two fans. So if they keep going with this for a while, they'll end up with six fans on DirectCU. CU6, but anyways, regardless, doesn't matter. For heat pipes, they've got two 10 millimeter heat pipes, two six millimeter heat pipes, and one eight millimeter heat pipe, cooling it, and a new design on those fans, but we'll probably talk about those more later if we get one of these for review back at the office. In terms of performance, there's some interesting stuff going on here. Uh, at first, I read the little card, and it was like, oh, GPU clock speed to be determined, and memory clock speed to be determined, but then they had their overclocking software open, so I was able to figure out their temps and everything, but they said it's okay, so I'll talk about it here. In OC mode, they're running at 1247 on the core clock. In gaming mode, they're running at 1228. And in silent mode, they're also running at 1228. The reason why the difference between gaming and silent mode is nothing is because in silent mode, your fans are gonna run a little bit slower and your temperature will be a little bit higher, but the performance should be more or less the same. Also, their memory is running at an unsurprising 7,010 megahertz. And with GPU tweak two, you have a few options. I know I already said something about OC mode and gaming mode and silent mode, but if you go out of the kind of simple area of GPU Tweak 2, which you can still see what everything's currently running at, the charts on the left-hand side, but if you go into the, like, I think it's called Professional tab, you can control things like you would in, say, Afterburner or GPU Tweak 1 or Precision or whatever the heck software you decide to use to overclock your graphics card. Now you might also notice that the cooler's pretty big. It's a little bit longer than the actual standard PCB and it's a fair amount taller, but it isn't any thicker. So this is a dual slot card, not a triple, not a two and a half, none of that kind of stuff. So you'll be able to fit fine with two slots, but please do note it is taller and it is longer when you're looking for case compatibility. Now that's all I can really say outside of a full proper review of the card. But one more thing I want to point out is their auto extreme technology. This is an industry first, 100% automated production process and material design. And they've got a cool little demo here where you can see the difference between what was probably soldered by a human and what was soldered by a machine. Pretty cool combination. Next up is the Claymore RGB, and I know, I know, I know, another freaking keyboard video from Luke, but it, it's fairly interesting, trust me. Okay, so, it's an RGB keyboard, but this is the first, as far as I know, RGB keyboard that is using Cherry's RGB switches that Corsair helped develop that isn't a Corsair keyboard. Fairly interesting, I think they have finally loosened their iron grip on those switches. Now also, it's it has it looks like a 10 keyless here, but there is another 10 key module, they just don't have it available. That 10 key module will have a volume slider on it and will be able to be plugged in independently. So it doesn't actually need to be plugged directly into the keyboard. If you wanted to use it on a laptop or whatever, you could do that. If you put that 10 key add-on on the right side of the keyboard, it's a normal numpad. If you put that 10 key add-on on the left side of the keyboard, however, it's a crazy macro pad for a huge amount of macros that you can use. A really interesting way of having that 10 key add-on set up. Not interesting enough for you, but wait, there's more. If you have an ROG motherboard, you can sync your motherboard and keyboard together, and you can control your CPU fan speed based on a function key on the keyboard, or you can even have the RGB-ness of your keyboard re reflecting the temperature of your CPU, which is pretty freaking cool. Also, you can sync a whole bunch of things together, so you can sync your keyboard and your mouse together to make all the breathing effects sync together, which is cool. I asked if this can also work with the breathing effect of the LED on your motherboard, board considering you can control other stuff along with your motherboard they weren't entirely sure so we'll have to stay tuned for that let me know what you guys think about the graphics card or the keyboard in the description down below or on twitter at luke underscore lafr also thanks to msi for sending us here this year we totally wouldn't be here without them check the link in the description down below that's the bitly link to see all of their products that they're releasing here at the show including a refresh of their laptops featuring broadwell processors also thank you to lynda.com check out lynda.com slash computex for a 10-day free trial so you can start learning right now while you're in the comments down below we're checking out the those links in the description. Don't forget to like, dislike, favorite, subscribe, share, all that kind of stuff. If you want to see all the rest of our Computex 2015 videos, stay subscribed to Linus Tech Tips. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.